In the southeasternmost corner of England lies the county of Kent. If you live there, you are closer to France than to almost any other part of the UK, as has been pointed out to me by some locals, not without a certain amount of uneasiness. One of the most interesting and nicest areas to walk around are the Chatham Historic Dockyards and adjoining St Mary's Island. And right across the river from there is what we are looking at today, Upnor Castle. Rochester, in northern Kent, does not get very much attention by the rest of the country, perhaps a bit unjustly so. After all, it's got a cathedral and an important old fortress, Rochester Castle, one of the many places in Britain that are nearly a thousand years old and still stand largely intact. Rochester actually used to be officially a city, but through a bit of an administrative oversight in the 1990s, I don't understand all the details of this, is now merely a town, or rather a borough in what is known as Greater Medway. The story of Upnor Castle is quickly told, there is not that much to it really. During the reign of Henry VIII, the River Medway had become a major, if not the main, anchoring place for the English fleet. And so Elizabeth I saw it necessary to give some protection and she commissioned this building here. The castle has a rather uneventful history. It saw action really only once during the Dutch raid on the River Medway. In the castle and grounds there are lots of these information panels. You learn many details about the events and the people involved, which you'd struggle to find quickly elsewhere. It almost looks like a compensation for the boring fact that the place was never sacked or destroyed. Even during the Civil War it was always only a defence against invading forces and never heavily fought over. Anyway, all this has been very thoughtfully put together. Quite typical for museums in the UK. So it says that this may look like a cupboard, but it actually contains the weights from the clock mechanism above. And we should have a look upstairs to find out more. Well, we'll certainly do that. The Dutch raid on the River Medway. What was that all about? The 1665 to 1667 Second Anglo-Dutch War, as it is referred to, wasn't one of those modern wars where entire nations are at each other's throat with great bombing and butchery. By today's standards, I'd call it a two-year sea skirmish. The Dutch and English were beating each other up a bit at sea over the control of trade routes. And so, damaging the other's naval capability was a main objective. King Charles II had been restored to the throne only a few years earlier. And in 1667 his mind was surely also occupied with rebuilding London. A careless baker had burned down some 15% of all residential buildings in the year before. The Great Fire of London in 1666. Large parts of the naval forces had gone without pay for many months, ships were neglected and, crucially for the Medway raid, the fortress of Upnor was in disrepair and inadequately stocked with guns and ammunition. After several days of warnings almost unacted upon, the Dutch fleet had been freely roaming the Thames estuary since the 6th of June, they finally struck. 
breaking through the protective chain across the Medway, they sailed past Abnor into Chatham dockyards and wreaked havoc. A lot of detail has been recorded elsewhere of the events until the Dutch withdrew on the 14th of June. They had left hardly any vessel afloat and captured the flagship HMS Royal Charles and some others. Against all odds, the crew at Upnor Castle had managed to keep the enemy under constant pressure from the fire of their crumbling guns and probably contributed crucially to the Dutch withdrawal before they could cause damage to the Chatham dockyards. Even so, by the evening of the 14th of June 1667, a large part of the English fleet had been firmly put in the toilet. <laughs> 